What's up, everybody? Big Herc, fresh out, and you're tuned in to another episode of one of our interviews. We came all the way out here from California to Detroit to get one of Detroit's finest. Brian, aka Peanut Brown, alleged ex drug kingpin, writer, uh, record label owner, businessman. This is a guy who's turned his life around, who's out here giving back to the community, and he has a hell of a story to tell. And only we could bring you guys the real, so we wanted to make sure we came all the way out here so that we can get it fresh, raw from him in the flesh. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel. We're doing big things out here in Detroit, and we're about to get it in from Peanut and let him tell his story. I'm just reaching for the stars. Just so I can see the top I'm just reaching for the stars Just so I can see the top just let me... What's up, baby? What's up, man? <laughs> What's happening? Told you you coming out from Cali to get a reel from me out here in Detroit, <laughs> baby. Okay. Good to see you, man. Right, let's get to it. Man, so uh, tell the people, man, I, I done introduced you already, man. Tell the people a little bit about where we're at right now. Oh, uh, man, that's where it all started. Yeah, I've been born and raised in this actual apartment right here, man, my whole life, at least till I was like 16, 17, you know what I mean? And has it pretty much remained unchanged? Is this how it looked when you were? Yeah, exactly how it looked. Oh, shit. You know shit. what I'm saying? A little touched up, but, you know, exactly how it looked. Nothing's changed. Um, and who'd you live here with? My grandmother. Okay. My, grand my grandmother and my grandfather. Okay. And that's pretty much who raised me my whole life. Okay. You know what I mean? And, uh, and you know, and growing up here, I mean... What kind of things like did you do as a kid? Was it your typical childhood? I know I spent a lot of time with my grandmother when I was little too, man, mm -hmm. and um, she taught me a lot. But what was it like for you as far as man, living here? Actually, I was kind of like shelter, but I still done kid stuff. I played sports, basketball was my thing. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Basketball, and then, of course we run the corner from Crunk, so I boxed a little bit. Okay, and took up karate. You know, the, okay. you know Bruce, Bruce Lee was in, so yeah, every, yeah. every kid wanted to be Bruce Lee back in the day. You know what I mean? So okay. I wanted to learn it all. So were they? Um, Pretty much your, your role models growing up, your grandparents, did they kind of have a big influence on you? No, actually, their son did, my Uncle Man Brown. You know okay. what I'm saying? He had, he had the biggest influence on me because he, you know, was always around here. Um, and he was just, you know, like my parents, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? He was the, the, the next person older than me, but that was an adult. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That was out here and had a name for himself. So he was like a big influence as far as being a role model, mentor? And those type of things. Oh yeah, definitely. Not just for me though, for for actually the kids. community. Yeah, definitely. Were you pretty much as a youngster, man? Did you, uh, you know, were you in trouble as a kid, or did you pretty much, you know, avoid a lot of that until your later years? Man, well, I'm gonna say like um, when I started getting like 14, 15, I started getting in trouble. You know what I'm saying? I got caught with a sawed-off shotgun. You know what I'm saying? The city of Dearborn. That's like one of our prejudiced, most prejudiced cities around. You know what I'm saying? In Michigan, I got caught with a shot going at 15. So that, after that, though, I kind of like toned it down a little bit and got back off into the sports real hard. Okay. It's funny, man, because that's the same, around the same time I started getting into shit, man. At 14, <laughs> 15, man, I don't know, you, you just, you're out there and you're trying yeah. to like find, your, sow your oats and make a name for Get yourself, identity man. identity and yeah. everything else. You know, so it does have a big impact. So, you know, after that incident, you know, you got into sports and, what what um kind of like what transpired after that man as far as in your you know growing up and you know as far as school and stuff um okay i, I was pretty good in school so you know um i guess at, right after i graduated high school i went to this little local college you know because by me being shorter coming up for real like i had to come in when the street lights was on okay my senior year and had a car and everything so you gotta imagine your senior year street lights on you gotta drive home mm. you know what i'm saying just just to keep the, my parents cool but Right after that, you know what I'm saying, when it's time for me to go to college, I had scholarships to go quite a few different good universities. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? But they had me so sheltered, I didn't want to leave the state. So I ended up going to a local college. So you got scholarships to play ball? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? They wanted me to go to Jackson State. I didn't want to go to Jackson State. You know what I mean? Y'all telling me down the street in the east side is too bad. I'm not going to go to no whole no motherfucking state. Yeah. It's just not happening. You know what I mean? So I ended up going to this college jordan college on grand river and greenfield you know what i'm saying and okay. it was kind of like they really kind of like disowned me a little bit because it's giving me ten dollars a day to go to school you know what i'm saying and then they 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 just got fed up one day and just like gave me five dollars a day 
You know what I'm saying? So, and that's where it all kicked off because I just wanted to make 10 dollars a day to go to school and I started selling rocks. Wow, so that $5 difference changed your life. Cha exactly. Wow. Yeah, 500 pennies. Fuck, man. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I could have been anything, man. Like, I, 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 got, I got the will and the vision to create and do anything. And um, how did you get into the drug game? Then? I mean, what was your first introduction as far as selling rocks? Well, like I said, um, I just wanted to make $10 a day to go to school. So I got with a friend of mine who was known to have cocaine. Mm -hmm. So he gave me an eight ball. You know what I'm saying? Back then, eight ball was probably going for like $100. You know what I'm saying? But people normally cut $300 out of it. Well, I only wanted ten dollars, so I cut one ten so I can make my ten dollars so I can mm. go to school. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing that my rocks was bigger than everybody rocks in the neighborhood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So by me cutting that one ten, I sold like five, six, eight balls, so it was time for me to go to school. You know what I'm saying? So I'm so I'm thinking, okay, I'm cool for the rest of the week now. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? I done went to school, came home. I came home from school. I got a line full of people that use crack at my house. I'm Waiting. Like, yeah, I'm like, oh, it's over. I'm good for the week. They're like, oh, come on, nut, come on, nut. You know what I mean? And so I guess that's where the living for the sacrifice started because I got back in it just to make them happy because I was good for a week. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but once I did that, it just took off because my mindset just only wanted to make a little end up turning into a lot. And then like 30, 30, to, 30 to 60 days, my line had $198,000. God damn. Yeah. School's out the window. Nah, I'm still going to school. Still going to school? Still going to school. Wow. Yeah, still going to school. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, still going to school. Man, I went to school for about two years, got my associate degree in business administration. While you were selling drugs? Yeah, while I was selling drugs. And were you still in this community right here? Yeah, right here. Now, I, I, man, listen, I was here for, damn, until I was like 21, until I actually left. And I'm going to take y'all upstairs. The top two apartments I made into one. Here, let me, let me show y'all. Come on. The dope turned me into a savage. I just be smoking in traffic. Try to say that I'm an addict. Watch out, little bitch, let me have it. My life is so cinematic. The cameras keep flashing and flashing. Flashing and flashing and flashing and flashing. Flashing and flashing and flashing. Flashing and flashing. You out with me, bitch, I'm a star. The camera be flashing and flashing. The dope turned me into a savage. The camera be flashing and flashing. So now this is back. So this is when you would kind of start building your empire. Was this something that you looked at at the time to continue? Or you did you see this as... A stepping stone what would you like reflecting back what was going through your mind when you were making that kind of money back then well the only thing that's going through my mind is like i love my family i love my people i love my community and i just wanted to be here and i already been exposed to houses in the suburbs so i wanted that feeling mm. here yeah so <laughs> Bring i it up. <laughs> yeah so i made you know i'm turn my house out there i had in the suburbs into in the hood and i was just comfortable being here with my family every day oh, you know what i'm saying so um as far as, you know, being an entrepreneur and all of that, like, I, my only thing was to make sure my people had drugs. I didn't think about business like that, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Until, like, this one particular time, I was serving a customer, and he was like, and I had, like, seven cars, because that was one of my liabilities. I, bought, I love cars. Okay. So I had, like, seven cars in the driveway. He was like, man, you need to turn into a car lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And before you knew it, man, I ended up with like, well, I just know when that happened to me in 92, when I had to leave, they took 96 cars from me in 52 house. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? So. Wow. I didn't look back after that. Yeah. But the game was so different back then on how you can manipulate success with that car shit and everything else. Yeah. It was, it, it was a lot easier to kind of maneuver as far as your business and the business aspect you think compared oh, yeah, to definitely yeah. definitely the, the banks was easier everything was easier you know what i'm saying you got to think of how everything was before 9 11. exactly yeah you know what i'm moving saying moving money around and moving all money time. around buying property you know what i mean selling it was just so much easier you didn't have none of that red tape it wasn't no limit almost on what you can take in the bank you know what i mean it was just cool and how would you compare that to like now with with social media and stuff and how guys are trying to get all these accolades by becoming insta famous i know back then it was more of a thing where you maneuver but it wasn't you weren't taking a whole lot of pictures and doing a whole lot of nah, that it wasn't it was just wasn't happening i don't take a whole lot of pictures now in regards to 
you know, like what they do in on social media as far as the street shit. Like mm-hmm. that's just retarded to me. You know what I'm saying? Flossing that's, with yeah, the money that's, and all that's, that type that, of yeah. shit. That's, that's, that's actually death. That's yeah. not life. You're that's, asking to get robbed. Yeah, and you're asking to, to die mm-hmm. in some type of way, whether it's like your liberty or your life. And if you could say one thing as far as just looking back on that aspect of your life at the time and talking to like a young peanut, what would you have told him now in retrospect, man, that would have maybe made a difference? Man, um, I mean, your biggest thing in anything that you do is security. You know what I'm saying? And you don't want to expose anything to be possibly threatened. You know what I mean? So, like, it just doesn't make sense to, and, and, and you just struggling for the wrong respect. You know what I'm saying? The respect that's out there in the community, in the street, in society, that's only going to get you deaf. You know what I'm saying? Because we've been programmed in, in the reverse. It's, mm-hmm. it's sadly to say that. You know what I'm saying? But when you show that, you're not going to be respected. Mm-hmm. You're going to be hunted. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you thinking that by you flashing, you might get one or two people that's going to bite, that want that want a little bit of it, but you're going to have 10 or 20 Wolf. Wolves coming to get it. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And now you didn't put yourself in, 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 in harm's way and anybody that's attached to you in harm's way because they're going to get to whoever they can get to to get to you. That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So I would advise you to just tone that down, man. You know what I mean? If you got it for real, if you're trying to get it for real, then be quiet with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And by the time they figure it, it's too late. Uh, bill was 20 million. No, my nigga peanut on the way. Uh, they found some meth on that dirty train. Lockdown's over. Get your yard time in. Exclusively at FreshOutSeries.com.